The gentleman from New York, Mr. Torres, is now recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, to read the bankruptcy filing, one gets the impression that FTX had the corporate governance of a college fraternity. Uh, in the bankruptcy filing, you note that decisions about the disbursement of funds were made via an online chat with personalized emojis. Um, and it seems to me corporate governance by emoji sounds like a recipe for the misuse of funds. During the New York Times deal book interview, Sam Bankman fried said that FTX and Alameda were if, quote, if not an intention, in effect, tied together more substantially than I wanted it to be. And Mr. Bankman fried speaks as if the conflict of interest came as a shock to him, as if it arose by accident or by mistake rather than by design. But it seems to me that Mr. Bankman fried set up a mutually beneficial relationship between Alameda and FTX. He would use Alameda as a market maker to generate liquidity and trading revenues for FTX and then use FTX as a lender to generate leverage for Alameda. And that incestuous relationship was neither accidental nor incidental. That incestuous relationship was central to the crypto empire that Mr. Bankman fried built. Do you agree with that analysis? Or? I can't take any exception to what you said. And so do you think that Mr. Bankman fried knew or should have known that the conflict of interest would foreseeably culminate in the commingling of customer funds? I, I certainly think he, he should have known his actions would result in the circumstances that we now find ourselves in. Absolutely. When FTX was seeking a bailout, FTX circulated to investors a balance sheet whose largest assets were tokens that FTX itself had invented. The largest asset on the balance sheet were $2.2 billion in Serum tokens. The Serum token is a creation of FTX. And needless to say, the value of a Serum token depends on the value of FTX as a company. If FTX collapses, the token is worthless. It becomes no different from monopoly money. Is there, do you agree that there's something fundamentally fraudulent about the practice of counting your own tokens as assets on your balance sheet? Well, clearly, uh, you know, because of the, uh, the, the, the way the token is created and the liquidity, uh, it, it's, it's a very, uh, you know, very risky position to, to, uh, to use your own asset effectively as collateral. When I think of an asset, I think of something that has value independently of the company. Just like a corporation would not count its own stock as an asset, it seems to me no crypto company should count its own tokens as an asset because if the company collapses, so does the token. Well, in terms of, of, of tokens generally, I'm not really making a judgment about you know, homegrown to tokens. Uh, they're certainly out there in the marketplace. They trade. Uh, you know, limitations on the use of, of, of your own assets as collateral certainly seems in, inherently risky. Uh, and I suspect the customers themselves didn't realize that. So those are at least two problems. Uh, FTX reportedly holds $900 million in liquid assets against $9 billion in liabilities. These are based on media reports. Mm -hmm. And it's been reported of the liquid assets, the largest among them is about a half a billion dollars in Robinhood stock. According to the Financial Times, the Robinhood shares are controlled by a foreign entity called Emergent Entity, which is said to be personally controlled by Sam Bankman Freed. So the largest liquid asset, the Robinhood stocks, who controls it? Is it you as the FTX CEO or Sam Bankman Freed? Uh, Sam Bankman Freed does not control that asset. We, that's an asset of the estate. Okay. During the New York Times deal book interview, Mr. Bankman Freed said that he knew that there was a problem on November 6th, yet despite knowing what he knew on November 6th, on November 7th, he proceeded to tweet the following statement, quote, FTX has enough to cover all client holdings, leading the public to believe that there was no problem. In your view, was he telling the truth or was he lying? I, I, again, I, I, I can't, I don't want to give the dignity to his comments. Uh, you know, he also said that he had $10 billion to invest in the company that day, so. Well, let me ask the question differently. At that time when he sent out the tweet, leading the public to believe that we have enough to cover all client holdings, did FTX actually have enough liquidity, enough assets to cover their liabilities? Absolutely not. So that statement was false? Yes. Okay. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you.